Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am heading to a friend's house. I am helping her make over her builder grade fireplace. I'll put a little inspo up on the screen, but basically right now it's just all kind of white drywall and then the gas fireplace insert. And we are gonna ship lap it and then add a wood mantle to it. And I think it's gonna look really great. So I thought I would take you along with me and I'm hoping that it's only gonna be a one day DIY. Here is how the fireplace looks right now. So we're gonna take that TV down and I think the plan is to get a replacement at some point. So we're not gonna put it back up. Um, and then we've got all these painted pieces of shiplap that are gonna go or horizontally all the way up. Um, so we've gotta work on taking that TV down and then I'm hoping that I can just pull this forward a little bit so that it will sit in front of the shiplap. But if that doesn't work, then we have to go with a second plan. So I took these crowbars to the trim of the fireplace. You can see I've been able to pull it forward. So that means that the shiplap will definitely be able to go in behind it. So now I'm going to remove the baseboard. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut along here, which is likely where there was some caulking. And then I will get these pry bars in there and be able to pry it off. So I got the baseboard off, no problem, um, and then I had to pull all of the little nails that were left behind out. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I don't want to make half cuts, like I don't want to have to cut these boards in um, hot dog style. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut the first piece of shiplap to place it here and work down, and then there's going to be a piece of baseboard, so if there's any gap um, down here that's less than six inches then I can just put the board here and I just quickly measured and I think that I should be able to do full pieces here as well so I'm hopeful for that I cut the first piece of shiplap I actually cut two so I am gonna fit this edge so you can see the lip here this one overhangs I'm gonna put it up underneath this and then I'm going to use the brad nailer just to get it into place. And I'm thinking I'm going to put two nails in either side. And then I'm going to put the other piece in underneath um, and see how much space we have left at the bottom and if we need a third piece. So here's the progress. We managed to get all around the fireplace. We did take it off a few times. You can see all the little nail marks that we will totally fill. Um, but we just didn't want to have any half pieces around the fireplace that I had to cut with a hacksaw. So now we're working on this piece just below this mantle. And we are going to build out the mantle a little bit. But I want to try and get this piece as close as possible. So a full piece will not fit here. And we also have this space, so I cut this piece the width of the fireplace, and then we measured from the mantle to the edge, and then this is the piece that we're going to have to remove, so we're just going to cut out this section. A hacksaw probably isn't the best choice. I think a table saw might be, but I don't have one of those, so a hacksaw isn't where it's at, and I'm just hoping for the best, and like I did say, we are going to build the mantle out a little bit so if it's not perfect i don't think you'll notice and even if we were going to keep the existing mantle i think you could still caulk and fill any imperfections underneath the mantle and it would be totally fine cutting that with the hacksaw actually worked okay you can see there's a little bit of a gap so if you wanted to keep using this mantle you just use some of the alex flex caulking and fill that and the hole would disappear and then just touch up the paint um but we are going to use wood to cover the mantle so you will not see that the wood will um, come down to about here and cover that gap.
So we got to the part where we need to cut around the outlet. So I'm gonna use the hacksaw again just to cut around there. But what you should do is um, turn the power off and then unscrew these two screws and bring it forward and mount it onto the shiplap. You shouldn't ever bury it behind the shiplap. Um, and we'll probably do something similar to this, but this is just the cable wire. Here is how everything is looking. So we're gonna start working on the crown and the baseboard, but I wanna show you how it's looking first. Um, so how you do the baseboard, it's kind of hard to explain, but you have to have an angled piece. So it's gonna be angled outwards. So the shortest piece is gonna be on the inside and it's gonna point out. I will show you after I cut it. And then of course I'm gonna do the same on the sides. I cut this piece of trim so you can see the angle that it's on. So the inner bit is the shortest and then it goes out on a 45 degree angle. So I measured from the edge of the shiplap all the way to the edge and it was 61. So I marked on the back of the trim at 61 and then it obviously goes out on the 45 which adds extra but you don't need to worry about that if you're just paying attention to where the 61 is on the back. We got the baseboard and the crown on, and then we just use some of the spackling to hide all of the nail holes. And then once that's dry, we will sand it. Um, and then also there was a joint in this piece of wood um, as well as a little bit here. So we are also going to be sanding that down. The next step is I'm gonna apply this Alex Flex Dap, which is for moldings and similar things. And I'm gonna put that along the seams here, here, um, and then along the top um, where the crown meets the shiplap as well as where the crown meets the ceiling. And if I was going to leave this white, I would also caulk along here. So the next part we're working on is the wood mantle. So we've got two of these six inch pine pieces and then one eight inch piece. So the eight inch piece is gonna go on the front and then the top and bottom is gonna have a six inch piece as well as the end. So from this side, it's gonna look um, like a piece of wood, but from like a, I guess like a beam or something. And then the end, you will see um, the ends. So it'll be notice more noticeable that it's not like a solid beam, but you will see when I'm finished. Because the board that we're putting on the front is eight inches, we needed to build up the top part. So one of these boards is gonna go right on the bottom here and then the eight inch board. So we've put some risers on the ends and in the middle just to give the top a little more height. Um, and then we are working on the end pieces right now. The end blocks are now attached so we're gonna cut the top and bottom pieces to be exactly the distance between the end of this block and the end of this block. Now we have got the ends, the tops, and the bottoms done, and we are just about to put the eight inch front piece on. And I've just attached this with a lot of um, the nails that I was using, and then I will fill it with um, wood filler. I've got the front piece on now, and I am gonna go in with the wood filler, so that's for all of the nail holes, and it's the same brand as the spackling I used before, but it's stainable, which is really important because we are planning to stain this mantle. We are just gonna put the side pieces on. We just went to the store to get them. So this is what it looks like, and it's just gonna cover the corners like that, and I'm gonna put it on with a product called No More Nails, and it's pretty easy to apply and dries almost instantly, so that will be really good. Here's how the fireplace looks. We've got the corner trim on either side. Um, unfortunately, we had to put in a little filler bit at the bottom, so the spackling is just drying there, but we are ready to stain the mantle. So that is our next step. Also, I will show you how the end looks. So you can see 
while the front is one nice slab, the side has some joins, so I just put some wood filler in there as well as the gap along the top, which isn't very noticeable. We just did the first coat of the stain on the mantle. It looks pretty dark on video, but this is the one we went with. It was Briar Smoke. They didn't have what I was looking for, but that's okay because I think this matches really well with the floor. And then we are gonna whitewash it, so it's actually gonna make it a little bit lighter. Um, so we're just gonna wait for this to dry. While this is drying, I thought I would just explain. We were thinking of putting the extra pieces of shiplap on the side, but basically these corner pieces didn't work. It pushed it out and just made everything so complicated. So if this fireplace was any deeper, um, I think it's only three inches deep, then we totally would have done it, but we just kind of made a decision that it just wasn't worthwhile. So that's why we didn't do it. And you definitely do not notice. I'm gonna whitewash this. Um, you guys are probably familiar, I've used this with a bunch of my different DIYs. And I'm just gonna apply this like I normally would. And we'll see how it looks. And if we need to do two coats, then we'll do two coats, but it's looking really good. And it will be even better when we have the painter's tape off. So we put the whitewash on the top, but um, decided we wanted to leave the front. So I'm gonna just restain the top how it was before. But I thought it was worthwhile to show you what that would look like. Here is the final fireplace. I'm gonna get her to send me a picture of it tomorrow in daylight, but I wanted to quickly show you how it looks. And like I said, the floor is this color and the kitchen cabinets are also pretty similar. So it looks really good. The next morning she sanded any of the filler that needed to be sanded and then painted it and this is how it looks now. I'm just editing the vlog but I wanted to say that I hope you enjoyed that. I'm hoping to continue to do more projects like that. I did complete another small project with another friend last week which will be in the coming vlog so I'll just show you a little bit of the behind the scenes on that but I hope you have an amazing week and there will be a vlog on Sunday. Thanks for giving me last week off.